Thanks, Kate, and welcome to Inside Politics. I'm John King. Thanks for sharing your day with us. President Trump takes aim today at a major Obama administration climate change initiative, rolling back an executive order on greenhouse gas emissions that the new president's EPA chief says smothers job creation. For too long over the last several years, you had certain industries, certain sectors of our economy that were within the crosshairs of the EPA. Uh, these industries like the coal sector were under assault. And so that is not going to happen anymore. We're going to have a very focused uh, pro-growth, pro-environment message. Uh, Democrats disagree with that. Also stoking the partisan divide, the White House vows to choke off federal funds to so-called sanctuary cities. That was a big day you had yesterday, too, on sanctuary cities. That was uh, a very, very important thing you did, and frankly, a very popular thing. So congratulations. And new tensions today, crackling tensions over Russia's election meddling. Senators want to question the president's son-in-law about a post-election meeting with a Russian banker close to Vladimir Putin. And Democrats call for the leader of the House investigation to step aside. Do you trust Nunes? I don't trust him. I, I mean, I think he's a very nice man. I think he is, frankly, over his head. I think he used very poor judgment. And I think he has tainted the committee. I actually think that there is an effort underway to, uh, to shut this committee down. With us to share their reporting and their insights, Jonathan Martin of The New York Times, Laura Meckler of The Wall Street Journal, Karen Tumulty of The Washington Post, and Olivier Knox of Yahoo News. In a bit, an emotional meeting of House Republicans this morning, and after it, upbeat talk, but no timetable of somehow revisiting Obamacare repeal. But let's begin a very busy hour with a brief but important vote of confidence in the man leading that House investigation into Russian election meddling. Top Democrats, as you just heard, say Chairman Devin Nunes too cozy with President Trump. The Democrats believe he should recuse himself from the House Intelligence Committee review. But Nunes says he is moving on with the investigation. And his boss, the House Speaker Paul Ryan, just moments ago, brushed aside calls for the chairman to step aside. Should Devin Nunes recuse himself from the Russia investigation? And two, do you know the source of his information? Uh, no and no. There you go. No and no. Ryan's backing brief there, but it's very important because it isn't just Democrats raising questions about how Nunes is conducting things. The chairman kept even Republicans on the committee in the dark as he went to the White House complex one day last week to review classified intelligence reports and then returned to the Oval Office the next day to brief the president, again, without looping in anyone else on the committee. Th this was done because the White House wanted it to be done, and this is what a cover-up to a crime looks like. We are watching it play out right now. Uh, Nunes says that's not true. He also says he had no choice. He says he was tipped off that members of the Trump transition team were mentioned in intelligence reports being shared across the executive branch late last year, and he wanted to review those documents to see if privacy guidelines were violated. I'd been working this for a long time with many different sources uh, and needed a place uh, that I could actually finally go because I, I knew what I was looking for uh, and I could actually get access to what I needed to see. I'm quite sure that I think people in the West Wing had no idea that I was there. Uh, look, I go over there a lot. Uh, I go over there often uh, for, for meetings and briefings. Uh, the details of this can be confusing, and we don't know a lot. We don't know what exactly Chairman Nunes is talking about in these documents where he says it's not related to Russia, but Trump transition officials are mentioned in these intelligence documents. He thinks that's an outrage, that the intelligence agencies are too quick to put the names in these documents. Uh, let's, for a moment, though, talk about the trust factor. The speaker answered quickly that Devin Nunes keeps his job. Does that shut this down? Not no. even close. <laughs> I mean, no, obviously. Yeah. I mean, the Democrats smell blood in the water here. I mean, I think that actually Speaker Reiner's, yes, Ryan's uh, endorsement of him was important, but, you know, not exactly enthusiastic. Um, you know, he didn't want to he, dwell on that. He didn't dwell. It was <laughs> a, 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 I think he, uh, not even. He, uh, he'd rather talk about health care. Yeah. We're just saying something. Right. So, I mean, you know, giving a two-letter a two -letter answer is, is about as brief as it gets. So, um, I think that. Democrats are really uh, think that they have something here. They think that he may, for, first of all, I think they may be genuinely concerned about the investigation and they think there may be something underlying in terms of the mm -hmm. Russian connections with the Trump administration. They want to get to that. Mm -hmm. And they also are kind of on the offense these days with the Republicans having one problem after right. the next. And this is another example of them going from. So I don't think the fact that uh, the, uh, the Speaker Ryan said no is going to put an end to this. And they're getting a lot of support from Russia hawks, including in the Senate, among Senate Republicans. And that's one, that's another reason it's not going away. This is not purely a partisan divide. There is a very strong undercurrent among Russia hawks like John McCain that, in fact, we need to get to the bottom of this. 
And, uh, in fact, John McCain said that the Nunes should disclose his source. So, no, it's absolutely not going to happen. And, and, and the more he talks about it, the less sense it makes. It's, it's really beginning to sound like a giant game of Clue, you know, Colonel Mustard in the library uh, with an... It's... OEOB. The, the idea that, first of all, he'd been working on this a long time and investigating it himself, then why didn't the other members of the committee right. know about that? Uh, the idea that, you know, a congressman just drops in all the time at the White House is also something that simply does not make sense. Somebody has to keep records of his entries. Somebody has to let him in. Um, again, there's so many details of this. And the, as he piles on more details, his story makes, you know, it seems less and less but coherent. Now, now, he says this is very sensitive private information that he'll be proven right in the end. When he can put all this out there, we shall see. But to your point about the White House, you can't get on the grounds. Uh, I mean, this, I guess you can jump the fence. We've had a few of those recently. Um, <laughs> but, um, but you know, you can't get on the grounds without being cleared in. And he's not just getting on the grounds. He's going into one of the most sensitive places right. in the executive And getting on a computer. Can I borrow your computer? And getting on a computer, on a computer there. Right. So wait, so yeah, to be clear, Somebody escorted so him So no in one there. at the White House knew that he was on the grounds in a sensitive facility looking at a classified computer system? I think maybe the White House has other problems, if that's true. Right, and so <laughs> here's the chairman this morning. Here's the chairman this morning. Again, he says he will be proven right, and for now the Republicans are standing by him. But the spectacle of this is what has a lot of people worried, in addition to the substance of this. Here he is in the hall saying, why should I leave the committee? But are you going to stay as chairman and run this investigation? Well, why would I not? You guys need to go ask them why, they're, you know, why these things are being said. So can this investigation continue as you as chairman? Why would it not? Because aren't there's... I, aren't I briefing you guys continuously? So but they're keeping saying, you up and keeping you up to speed? Words. But they're saying that it cannot run as you as chair, well, you sounds, chairman. you got to go talk to them. That sounds like their problem. I don't have... You know, my colleagues are perfectly fine. I mean, there's, they know we're doing an investigation, and that will continue. Uh, the, the, it just, it's like a riddle. He keeps a answering questions with questions in the sense of saying, go ask the Democrats, go ask the Democrats. But, but he says he's staying on. And to your point, I want to play this sound here. To your point, it's, it, yes, it's Democrats in the House who are saying he has to go, including the ranking member of the committee and the Democratic leader, Nancy Pelosi. A lot of Republicans in the House, publicly they support him. Privately, they're mumbling about, what is he doing here? Why didn't he clue us in on this? We're not quite sure what his end game here or what his information is. On the Senate side, as Karen noted, a lot of leading Republicans saying, this looks bad. Following the House investigation is like following a mystery novel. You never know what's going to happen next. I have a great deal of confidence in the Senate investigation because it is bipartisan. Well, I think there needs to be a lot of explaining to do. I've been around for quite a while and I've never heard of any such thing. Something's got to change, otherwise the whole effort in the House of Representatives will lose credibility. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just obvious. It reminds me of the line that they often throw around in the House, where if, if you're a Republican in the House, you say, you know, the Democrats are the opposition, but the Senate is the enemy. Um, <laughs> there's not a lot of love uh, between chambers, and especially when it comes to sort of sensitive national security um, matters. I mean, the, the sort of Senate snobbery is barely, barely hidden there. I mean, they feel like this is sort of their purview, and that that they're a more bipartisan body, they're, they're a more, a more serious-minded body in some respects, right. and that the, the sort of House... Well, they have managed to actually... Start proving they that. They have actually managed leaks. to keep most of this behind closed doors on the Senate side, and, and the chairman and the ranking member... Very few leaks. ...largely get along. They've been getting along. Burr so, and Warner, yeah. So it, it has been a more adult... I, I, get, so the, I, I get the rivalry between the two chambers, but it has been a more adult on the... Uh, on the Senate side so far, we're talking about the access to the White House. Devin Nunes showing up, going into the old executive, executive off, Eisenhower Executive Office building, getting into one of the most secure rooms in the United States of America, getting onto a computer, and the White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer says, we had no idea he was there. I don't know why he would travel, brief the speaker, and then come down here to brief us on something that, that we would have briefed him on. It doesn't really seem to make a ton of sense. So. I'm not aware of it, but it doesn't really pass the, the smell test. Uh, correct, sir. You are correct, sir. It doesn't really pass the smell test. And I think that, I mean, what underlies all of this, of course, is the suspicion or the accusation that he is too tight with the White House for to, right. conduct, to lead yes. this investigation. That's what the heart of this is. So the question becomes, well, if he is getting his information from the White House, which is supposedly helping the White House, 
or just coincidentally right. helping the White House? Right. You know, the, the question becomes, can he actually investigate the people that he's so close to that he just kind of drops by for he, reading he, room? He has to understand the gravity of his job and the gravity of the moment and the politics of the moment. Yes, even if he's doing the right, right. thing, Democrats are going to look at this politically. Right. So you have to take, even if you have a trust issue, you have to take the ranking Democrat with you. If he had taken, said, we, I got something, I can't really tell you about it, but you got to come with me, then we wouldn't be in this mess. And there's a lot of mainstream folks in the Republican Party uh, who are asking, so what's going on here? Because they know the chairman, who was a mainstream member, and he's really sort of, you know, fallen for Trump in a lot of ways here. And um, it, it's puzzling to a, a lot of folks on the Hill. Well, just real fast, John, taking a step back and looking at this politically, Every story about this investigation, it just creates a distraction for Trump. It's a cloud over his head. As well, an the additional, an additional cloud because Trump now. Trump can't help himself. Yeah, it, he responds. But an additional cloud is that the chairman canceled the hearings this week, including right. one uh, today at which the former deputy attorney general, Sally Yates, a holdover for the Obama mm -hmm. administration, was fired uh, by the when she wouldn't enforce the travel ban. Now there's a dust-up, your newspaper reporting, right. uh, that she was told she couldn't testify, that the, the Trump administration told her that her conversations with the White House on these issues were covered by executive communication, therefore you can't testify. The White House is forcefully denying that it had anything to do with blocking her from testifying, but there again, it muddies the water. There are there, letters. There are, are black and white words on paper, or however they receive them, maybe electronically, saying that they were trying to assert this privilege, and then the chairman conveniently, coincidentally, uh, you know... Canceled the meeting so they didn't have so to. So they don't right. have to, to push the issue and go public with it. When the first of the odd Nunes behavior bubbled up, a Bush national security career intel, but served under George W. Bush, emailed me to say, the headline here is Nunes calls for independent investigation. <laughs> <laughs> so, but where does this go now? Can the Democrats now, because this is embarrassing, can the Democrats now say we have to have this hearing where they were going to bring James Clapper back in, who had said he saw, well, by the time he left, he had seen no ev evidence of collusion. They wanted him back publicly to see if he would pull that back some. They were going to bring in John Brennan, who was the CIA director under Obama, who you, you know he was going to get asked, how did it feel to have the President of the United States call you a Nazi? Uh, and they were going to bring in Sally Yates, who, of course, you know, was there at this very strange time, the transition. Well, I mean, I suspect Sally Yates testifies before this is over, for sure. I mean, and, and if the House you know, won't do it, the Senate. probably yeah. Senate, Senate Yes, well, exactly. Yeah. I mean, but because that you now have the White House, rather than responding to the story by saying, you, exactly right, she shouldn't be testifying, they're saying that's not true. Well, then mm. there's, well, then is there no problem here or what? I mean, I think that this, this is not going to just get shut down. There's just too much, too many avenues, too much going on, too much public information. This is all eventually going to come out. The but, other thing is... How the does the chairman there. make it right? How does the chair? How does the chairman? Can he make it right? He at this point, you know, at this point, I think that it's the House Intelligence Committee invest. Whatever the results of it are, are going to have very little credibility. Uh -huh. And in fact, this is sort of putting more pressure on for this to be just taken out of the purview of Congress and given to some kind of independent body. Uh, the senators certainly don't want that. You spent a lot of time uh, doing reporting on the ranking Democratic member. Yeah, does, does he believe this relationship can be repaired? He's the one who came out yesterday and said, you know, I've tried not to say this, but I think the chairman has to go. Well, his solutions are all basically Nunes must recuse himself, must step aside, can't lead the investigation. Um, We've got to have something, something more independent than that. So I would say the relationship, I suppose, over time can be repaired, but on this particular Hard mission, say, it yeah. cannot. It cannot, and it's a very important mission. And if you're a Trump supporter out there, it's important for your perspective, too. And to the chairman's position that the intelligence agency is being sloppy and unmasking people, that's a legitimate issue, too. He just needed to handle it more professionally, shall we say, intelligently, somebody might even say. <coughs> Next, come together or else. An emotional meeting for House Republicans and a potential reset on repealing Obamacare? Really? That's next.